Next up, an entrepreneur who's tasted both boom and bust. He built his previous property business into a £2 million empire, only for that dream to turn to dust. Now he has another one, but he needs the dragons to help turn it into reality. When the property crash happened, it kind of destroyed the business. I was in serious financial trouble for four years. It was a really big struggle. It totally undermined my confidence in myself. It was a really horrible time. Um, thankfully, things are going a lot better now. I'm just uh, looking forward to seeing the look on Deborah's face today when I uh, announce what we're looking for. I'm going in asking for a £1 million investment in exchange for 5% equity in the company. Hello, Dragons. My name is Fraser Fernhead. I'm the founder of The House Crowd, the UK's leading property crowdfunding platform. And today, I'm asking you for a £1 million investment in exchange for 5% of my company. Back in 2007, I was running my first property investment company. I sold that for £2.25 million. Unfortunately, a financial crisis happened, and I went for ordering my dream car and Aston Martin to literally having to borrow money to pay the utility bills and living off baked beans, essentially. It was a very, very tough and uh, stressful time. In 2010, I started working with some old clients, again, property investors, and we set up the House Crowd. It was the world's first property crowdfunding website. And we've now created a way whereby anyone can become a landlord and start building a better financial future for themselves. To date, we've raised £11 million and bought 135 properties. On our current forecast, we're set to raise £40 million over the course of the next 12 months. And with a £1 million investment, I believe we'll be able to raise £125 million. Thank you very much for listening. At stake, a 5% share of a business that allows investors to club together to buy properties which are renovated and rented out. But Fraser's playing for high stakes and valuing his business at £20 million is a strategy that's fraught with risk. Fraser, you can imagine coming in and, and, and pitching a £20 million valuation against a business. You are going to probably go through, I'm not going to take you back to your dark times of 2010, but I think we might come close. How do you get to a valuation of £20 million today? Well, over the course of the next um, 12... No, 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 today. Today. You're like, saying to me today, Peter, my company is worth £20 million and I'm going to explain to you why. OK. Um, if we use the analogy of a wave as an, a surfer on that wave, we're starting off, it's very, very hard to get going, so we're paddling very slowly. As that wave gathers momentum, we're gathering pace with it. We grew 149% in our first year, 211% in our second I've talked to a number of venture capitalists who've approached us about how they would value the business. And how, talk... how, how, how have they said? They said, clearly a business like ours, which is exceptionally high growth, you can't value in a traditional way. Based on the fact the crowd, property crowdfunding industry is due to grow a hundredfold over the next five years, the venture capitalists see a very, very great value in property crowdfunding. Um... A venture capitalist said to you, right, that it's worth 20 million. And I'm assuming they wanted to invest. So why are you here? It's, a, it's an option for us. It's one I'm very seriously considering. But I, it's an I, option. I, I'm, I'm so, very, so what I'm you're saying is that if, even if we say, here's a million pounds, you might say, well, it's an option. I have to consider it. it it's an option. With other opportunities on the table, Fraser can afford to play it cool. But the Dragons are still wrestling with the £20 million price tag he's attached to his business. OK, so if we just look at the, the last 12 months, what was the total income for the company? £375,000. That's, uh, that's, our, that's our fees. We charge 5% on all monies raised. We raised £7.5 over the last 12 months. 
So, so, so basically, you have an income of 375,000. Mm -hmm. What's your profit? We haven't made a profit as yet. Oh, you haven't made a profit? Correct. Whoa. A relatively modest turnover, zero profit, and a 20 million pound valuation. Something doesn't add up. Can Deborah Meaden glean any positives in Fraser's crowdfunding revenue model? I love crowdfunding. I love the le lending model, I love the um, equity model, and I think it is bang on for lots of products. The problem with property is you're applying a pretty high risk type of raising funds into something that people falsely believe is safe as houses. Do you think people understand how risky investing in property is? Well, to invest with us, they have to go through a process, and if they're not a sophisticated investor or a high net worth investor, they have to answer a questionnaire and sign a risk profile. Now, the property market is so... It can be so volatile, as we now understand, that the minute they want their cash out, it could be, up, it could be tied up there for years. Well... Property by its very nature is in a liquid asset. We make that abundantly clear. The way we do it does, in fact, make it slightly more liquid in the fact that people are trading shares in the companies that own the property. This issue that I'm concerned about, which is people believing that actually they can buy into this and when they come out there has to be a market, then it could well be at the very moment when property prices are on the decline or in a blip. There, there are risks involved in any investments, and we spell those out quite clearly yeah, for people. No, you're misunderstanding. Thanks for explaining there are risks involved in any, any investments, because I, I get that. <laughs> when people buy into property, they have a belief that it's safer somehow. This is not safer. So I'm afraid I won't be investing. I'm out. She may be a risk taker by nature, but this is one business risk that Deborah Meaden isn't prepared to take. Nick Jenkins is putting his online business acumen aside and stepping into the shoes of an average crowdfunder. The problem I would fear is that if I put the money in, you might have invested in property, but as the retail investor, you're not in control of that property or what goes on with it. Well, we've had three years of successfully delivering dividends and we are, in fact, regulated and authorised by the FCA. When I look at it, I think... I, I, I just... Something doesn't feel right about it. And um, if there were disgruntled investors and there was a, a clamour around it, guess whose name would be involved? The dragon who put their, who put their money into it. So from a, a reputational point of view, it's an absolute no. I'm out. Nick is intent on ensuring that Brand Jenkins remains untarnished. Will Sarah Willingham be any more willing to put her reputation on the line? I think that the other dragons have been extremely generous with you. And the reason why I think they've been generous is because they're even discussing your business. This is the most disrespectful pitch from an individual. I never expected to sit here and be offended in this way. I mean, you've stood there and said, yeah, well, it was an option. I mean, it's just completely and utterly wasting our time. I'm out. An infuriated Sarah Willingham has walked away from the deal. But Peter Jones has 20 million reasons not to let the issue of Fraser's company valuation slide. It takes me less than a minute to work out what the opportunity is in terms of valuation, based on your model. Even when you raise 100 million, which you haven't today, that's 10 times where you are, it cannot possibly be worth anything like 20 million to any investor, unless they are completely stupid. As I have said, people are investing in companies like us at those sorts of valuations. But are you, are you talking to people that are over five years of age or under? I think it's a different way of valuing businesses than the traditional way. I don't get it, Fraser. There's got to be a reason why you've done this. Did you want, you, did you want this to happen? 
No, not at all. Fraser, I don't need you to hear any more. Um, it's I, I'm incredibly upset about the valuation and and, um, and disappointed, but I'm out too. I can't put my name to this. So on that basis, you know what I'm going to say? I'm out. Thank you. That's going down as the most ridiculous valuation ever in the game. Can I just have real attitude? He just asked for a million pounds, didn't he? Yes. Yeah. And he sauntered into the den, yeah, and said, well, it's an option. Did that just happen? Yeah, yes. I think it did. <laughs> in many ways, I was surprised by their reaction. I went in there, I thought I was perfectly open and friendly. Just because I went in there, I wasn't in complete awe of them, doesn't mean I was disrespectful. I was treating them as I was, I was treat anybody in a business meeting. Mm -hmm.